Tip tot. Everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart. Today we're taking a look at this jelly UI or jelly blob effect that you can do inside of After Effects. It is super, super easy and it's completely live. For example, if I were to go inside here uh, and zoom in and move one of these blobs, um, you will see that it happens in um, live action. It's not pre-rendered, it's not anything like that. It generates as you move the blobs around, which is super, super useful and very cool. Um, so let's dive right in then. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a new composition. I'm gonna use my standard of 1920 by 1080 with 60 frames per second and just hit okay. Um, now we'll leave creating a background for now like we usually do and I'll, you'll find out why in a minute. Um, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your shape tool and draw yourself a shape. I tend to use circles because we're making blobs, um, which is very good, so we'll call this one green. Um, let's quickly realign that anchor point so it's in the center and put our blob in the center of the screen. 960 by 540. Perfect. And let's scale it down a touch. Okay, so we have our blob, our first one, and of course we're now going to need a second one. So we'll just control D to duplicate that um, to interact with the first. We'll put them next to each other and maybe we'll make the second blob um, into a nice deep red. Um, actually, let's do it properly and we'll take the color from our tip top color palette. We'll make it actually into the tip top red, uh, like so. Okay, um, so we have our two blobs now, and uh, as you can see, if we drag them next to each other, they don't interact in any way. They are just two shapes. Now, the way you create this blob is very simple. Um, it is a combination of two uh, effects from your effects and presets uh, control panel. The first is a fast blur, uh, and the second is a simple choker. Now, if you want to, you can apply those effects directly on the layers, but that means you have to divide, uh, apply both of those effects directly on every single layer you want to do that in. So the best way to do it is actually to click inside your composition panel down here and add in an adjustment layer and apply all the effects to that. Um, for example, we drag the fast blur down um, and then we can go back and we can add the simple choker. That's all we need. Now I'll explain what these do in a minute. Um, so we're on our adjustment layer now and you can see that if I increase the blurriness of this fast blur, it does it for every single item underneath that uh, adjustment layer. Hence why we didn't create a background yet. Um, now, if you wanted this to act independently from other elements, uh, such as backgrounds or other layers, all you need to do is pre-compose this at the end, like I did in my previous example. Uh, and we can dive through that if you want to as well. Um, so let's say uh, we increase the blurriness to about 30. Um, so that it gives it just a nice soft edging around these shapes. Then with the simple choker, you basically want to choke this blur, which basically means going from the outside in all the way until the blur is insignificant. You can't see it. So just slowly increase and go and go and keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And there. We'll call that 30 for neatness. So 30 and 30. And you'll see that obviously if we uh, hide this layer, the shapes are actually slightly larger um, with the, without the effects applied, meaning you do have to overshoot what you want a little bit, make things slightly a touch bigger than you actually want the final product to be, because as you can see, they're choking out that blur. So all we've done there is we've increased the blur around the edges of the shape so that the actual edge of the shape is around here, and then we've choked all of that off. Now, logically, you can see how this would cause the shapes to interact. If we select this red shape here uh, and we move it closer to the green, you'll see that when that blue line around the edge touches it, the shapes actually begin to merge. Now, this is because um, the blur at the edge of these shapes is actually touching at this point, okay? As soon as those little bits start to like peek out there, uh, that's when the two shapes are actually touching. So if we did that, for example, and then hid the um, layer, you'll see they're right, right next to each other. So if we get in like this to the point where they connect, you'll see that the shapes are then touching. Okay, and all it's doing is cropping out essentially that piece of blur and uh, making it so that the two shapes morph into each other as if they were jelly. Uh, now I kind of like the fact that it's um, kind of two different colors, but obviously if you wanted to keep these the same, it creates more of an actual jelly effect. Bloop. 
like so. Uh, and you can see that it really does, you have to move quite far away for the jelly to stop making effect. Now, if you wanted to increase that, that's very easy to do. You'd obviously just increase the amount of blur up to say 60 and increase the choker touch to compensate for it. Um, and you should be able to drag these further and further away. So if they react in that way, see, they're actually reacting a lot further away from each other than they were before. Um, now, if we were to go back and reduce this choke to say maybe 20, um, you can see that you can actually get a little bit further out of it if you wanted to, um, but you do get this kind of rough pixelation around the edge. So you really want to choke as far as you can. Um, and the less you choke, the softer the shapes and the more you blur the softer the shapes um, so it really is finding that balance between the two uh, i tend to find for a 1080p screen that 30 and 30 tends to work quite well for reasonably sized shapes and um, that's really all there is to it um, i won't go into the rest of the stuff of the, in this tutorial that i did before because uh, it's all just standard things moving and rotating and scaling etc and you can see immediately how it works so Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. Nice and quick on this time. Just before I go, I am gonna once again plug the fact that we now have a uh, Discord community chat. Uh, there is a link for it in the description. It's basically a place where all of you guys, all you tip tutters can hang out uh, and discuss design ideas, uh, chat to me, ask any questions that you might have. And I'm usually hanging around there in the evenings to um, answer them for you. So head on over there if you've got any questions about this or any other tutorials, in fact. Um, and we hopefully can grow a nice little community where we can all, as designers, help each other out. Thanks very much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.